seating lower porcelain veneers. As we've discussed in a previous video, you always prepare interproximally, including the interproximal part of the tooth in the preparation and the incisal part. Once we've removed the provisionals from the prepared teeth, the next part is to rinse and then come back with flour of pumice and water and pumice the teeth just to clean off any little bits of excess uh, cement or bonding agent. While you're pumicing, try not to irritate the gingival tissue, but that's difficult to do because it's important to polish the margins. This is a slow speed handpiece and just a profi cup. Next, we're gonna place a two by two in the mouth and scrub the teeth with isopropyl alcohol. This again cleans any little remnants of cement from the teeth. Be sure you isolate the, the teeth well with two by twos so that the patient doesn't ingest the isopropyl alcohol. I'm now gonna transfer the porcelain veneers to the teeth with red rope wax on the tip of a cotton tip applica applicator. That's an excellent carrier for these porcelain veneers. Don't push it on very hard. Just barely let the rope wax touch the veneer and it makes it so easy to carry and seat. I'll wet the veneer and place them one at a time just to ensure that the interproximal contacts and the margins are correct. You can see there's a dappin dish of water and I'm, after I place the porcelain veneer on the cotton tip applicator with the red rope, rope wax, I dip it into the water so that it makes it easier to seat on the tooth. Now this is just the try-in. I'm checking the margins. Now you'll note in this case, we've got porcelain veneers on the cuspids, the lateral incisors, and the incisors, and either all porcelain crowns or Emax crowns on the bicuspids. Once the veneers are placed on the teeth for try-in, have just press each veneer and be sure it doesn't move. If you press this veneer in the middle and one of the veneers on the sides moves, you know that contact is a little heavy and you'll want to adjust it. Whenever you press the veneer, the center veneer, the veneers on each side should not move when you press the center veneer. That's how you check the contacts with porcelain veneers. Once I remove the veneers from the teeth after the try-in with the cotton tip applicator and the rope wax, then I rinse any blood off of the veneer and wipe them with isopropyl alcohol on a cotton ball. Remember the veneer has been etched on the tooth side with 8% hydrofluoric acid in the lab prior to the lab sending you those veneers. It's very important that after the lab etches the tooth side of the veneer, that they place the veneer in a, an ultrasonic bath with acetone and get rid of the chalk layer that will be on the veneer after etching. So here I'm wiping the inside of the veneer with isopropyl alcohol after trying. Then just drying it with your air syringe. I'm placing the, the uh, carrier, which is the cotton tip applicator and the red rope wax back on the veneer and lining them up precisely so I don't have to wonder which order to place them in. Next, we etch the teeth with 38% phosphoric acid. This is very important. If there's any dentin exposure, you only etch the dentin for 15 seconds. If you etch it more than 15 seconds, the dentinal tubules will, co will collapse and you won't get the hybrid layer formed when the primer in the primer adhesive chases the water down into the dentinal tubule. So don't etch dentin more than 15 seconds. Most of the time with porcelain veneers, the entire prep is in enamel and it doesn't really matter how long you etch the enamel. 30 seconds to a minute is fine. Normally I etch enamel for 30 seconds. Now, when you rinse the etch off, this is very important, get some ice cold water. We normally get it from our water cooler. And when you rinse it off, rinse it with the ice cold water and that will help control any bleeding 
that you may have in the tissue, which sometimes occurs when you've had provisionals that are connected uh, on the teeth for a prolonged period of, or for several weeks. Now, you're gonna, I'm going to turn the lights off in the optory, the overhead lights, because you don't want any light getting on the primer adhesive prior to curing. Remember, you're not going to touch a curing light until the veneer is seated with the filled resin. Don't touch a curing light. Don't cure the primer adhesive prior to seating of the veneer. Now, I'm, I've isolated the teeth with two by two, so uh, the patient is not breathing any moisture onto the teeth. I'm now placing a copious amount of primer adhesive on the teeth a copious amount, just loading it on the teeth. Then I'm going to put the two by two right up next to the tooth and blow the excess onto the two by two. You don't want any movable primer adhesive on the teeth. Then do the same thing on the porcelain veneers, on the two side of the porcelain veneers. Place the primer adhesive with a pledge it and then blow it all off till there's nothing wiggling, nothing moving on the tooth side of the veneer. I next cover the veneers after I place the primer adhesive. I cover them with an orange screen to prevent any uh, light getting to the veneers and potentially setting up the primer adhesive. Remember, no curing light until the veneer is completely seated with the filled resin. In this case, we're using Rely-X Veneer Looting Composite. Most of the time, if I'm not trying to match teeth, I use a B0.5 shade. Occasionally, I'll use a transparent or a translucent shade. Place the tip of the filled resin tube in the tooth side of the veneer and express the filled resin. Don't let the tip of the tube come out of the filled resin. If you do, you can incorporate bubbles and you'll have a gray area on your veneer. How do I know that? <laughs> Don't let that happen. Then with your carrier, place the veneer on the tooth and use two cotton tip applicators to place it, then just one after the other. And I'm gonna go back and forth. Each time I place a veneer, I'm gonna go back over all the veneers with the two cotton tip applicators, one on the incisal edge, one on the facial, and gently but firmly push those to place to be sure there's no movement. Even with the finest porcelain veneers and crowns, there's a slight micro gap between the veneer or the crown and the tooth. With an excellent veneer, an excellent crown, that may be 25 microns. With a poor veneer crown, it may be 1,000 microns or more micro gap. A bacteria is 8 microns. It's very important that that micro gap be completely sealed. If you remove the excess cement from the veneer before it has initial set, if you remove it in the flowable stage, as you wipe it with your cotton ball, you're gonna get some suck back in that microgap, creating a void in the microgap. Well, what's gonna happen in that void? You're gonna get bacteria. It's gonna cause stain, sensitivity, and decay. So if you initially cure the excess filled resin such that it chips off, it's like a perfect sandwich or like two bricks together with mortar between them. You have a flat surface and that micro gap is completely filled. You will not have sensitivity, you will not have decay, and you will not have staining. So once the veneers are set, you're gonna take a curing light. This is a Dimiton conventional curing light. I'm going to place it on the lingual surface or the facial surface, and I'm going to engage the light. And very quickly, I'm going to, for six veneers, I'm going to go 1,001, 1,002, and disengage it. Turn it off. Then I'm going to place it on the other surface, either the facial or the lingual. Normally, I start with the lingual. 
I'm going to place it on the facial surface, engage the light, turn it on, go 1,001, 1,002. Now, if you go 1,001, 1,002 to 1,010, the cement or the, the I mean, the uh, looting cement will be completely set and it will be hard to remove. All we want is crunchy snow crunchy snow so it will chip off and you have a perfect seal or a perfect fill of the microgap. This is not final curing. This is just initial curing so that we're filling the microgap and don't have any suck back when we remove the excess looting composite. We want that composite to chip off, to break off and not wipe off. Then once you've cured the excess looting composite, you're going to chip it off with the back edge of a scaler. You can also use the front edge. Do you see how that just chips right off? Then I'm going to go back with a thicker waxed floss and floss between each of the seated veneers. In this particular case, you'll note that one of the veneers is not placed. While I was seating it, I inadvertently fractured a tiny piece of the facial margin. So I'm seating the rest of the veneers, re-impressing, uh, sending that veneer back to the lab for remake and seating it another time. I'll place a direct provisional in this case. So once we've seated the veneers and we've removed most of the excess and we floss between the veneers, then we're going to come back and cure with a curing light on each side of the teeth, 60 seconds per tooth. Now again, these are Dimitron conventional curing lights. So 60 seconds on the facial side and 60 seconds on the lingual side of each tooth. Once we have uh, cured the looting composite completely, we'll go back and polish with a large chamfer diamond on the lingual, followed by a gray Shofu rubber wheel, then if there's any excess cement or rough areas on the facial, we'll use that high speed, uh, very tiny 12 fluted or 30 fluted carbide burr to polish away any, any little remnants of cement on the facial. And then polish with uh, 5 micron uh, diamond polishing paste. Thank you all so much for joining us on this week's episode of The Dental Minute. Go ahead and subscribe right now, right here, and join us next week as we will be talking about lower mini implants with no ridge. You won't want to miss it.